Good morning, everybody. I recognize a lot of people from years gone by. I think we've done this program, I don't know, eight or nine years now. I'm just wondering how many people have actually been screened for colon cancer at this point? Uh, so that's, that's great. I, it look, looks to me like over 50% of the uh, people that are here have been screened. And of course, screening for cancer has been shown in a variety of studies to be uh, effective for colon cancer. I'll briefly touch upon some of those in preventing colon cancer. Similarly, for breast cancer, screening with mammography uh, has been shown to be effective in reducing breast cancer. Uh, prostate cancer is a little bit more controversial with the PSA uh, blood test. In fact, the guy that invented the PSA wishes he never did uh, because of a potential of overdiagnosis. But, you know, in general, obviously, skin screening. Th these are the main cancers that we screen for to try to uh, pick them up at a very early stage. We're going to talk today about options for colon cancer screening. But I wanted to maybe make this talk a little bit personal uh, because we don't, I think, as relatively healthy people think about what it's like if we, in fact, get cancer. Um, and I don't want to say unfortunately, but for, for me, last year on April 15th, I wasn't feeling so good. I had a, a CAT scan. And this is, this is my CAT scan. This is me. I did everything right. I was you know, pretty healthy, exercised, ate correctly. But there's a big, and I got these arrows pointing to it, tumor in my stomach that had grown out and got into the lymph nodes. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, we don't screen for stomach cancer. It's just a relatively uncommon tumor. There's no really effective way. I mean, I guess people could get endowed, but it's just not a recommended thing to screen for this. Uh, by the time my symptoms became apparent to me, I had this tumor, which was relatively advanced at the time. Uh, so that was almost a year ago. And uh, since then, I've had a lot of chemotherapy. I've had surgery. And in fact, my oncologist is, is sitting in the room, and you'll hear from her later, not about me, but about colon cancer. You know, I'm hopeful that uh, the treatments that I'm getting will, uh, you know, allow me to continue. You know, I mean, because you don't really realize, you know, how good things are until something kind of bad happens. So this is stomach. We don't screen for stomach, but we do screen for colon cancer. And I'm a radiologist, and uh, I've been working in colon cancer screening for many years and some research that I've been doing, but I'm very familiar with, uh, and I think Dr. White did a very good job in her presentation. Uh, but despite the fact that we have known for many years, probably since the late 60s, and maybe even earlier than that, there's been some uh, evidence to suggest that you know, polyps turn into cancer over time, they grow slowly. As a radiologist, and just to remind you, a radiologist is somebody who looks at imaging studies, makes a diagnosis to help the other doctors in managing their patients. You know, here we see a patient who has a large cancer in the right side of the colon, the ascending colon. Uh, as we heard, there are six or seven parts of the colon if you want. This cancer is growing into the pancreas and into the top of the right kidney. This is a very advanced cancer. This is a 65-year-old man, and he had never undergone colon cancer screening in his life. Had he adhered to the screening guidelines and at age 50 had had some sort of screening test, let's say a colonoscopy or something else, uh, presumably this would have been detected maybe as a polyp before it became an invasive cancer. Um, but the problem that we have, and I'm really not sure how to explain it, except for patients or people are reluctant to or have a fear of having their colon examined. I think it's true. You know, overall, uh, this is statistics from 2006. It might have changed slightly. And in fact, they, they have a little bit. But 
I know for sure pancreas cancer is increasing, but these are the new cases and deaths from cancer in our country. Um, there are 55,000 people that die from colon cancer, more or you know, maybe 50,000 this past year, but you know, around that area. So you can see it's the second leading cause of cancer death. Now look at all the cases of prostate cancer, and yet, you know, I mean, and those are just diagnosed cases. If you look at autopsies, most men will probably have prostate cancer. Uh, these are the things that, you know, some of the more common cancers, but as we heard, you know, endometrial cancer, other cancers are less common. Certainly, if everybody underwent colon cancer screening, uh, we would not reduce this number to zero because some cancers just grow too fast. Some occur sporadically in younger people that we just don't count. That, and some of them we simply miss on screening. Screening techniques are very good, but unfortunately, they're not 100%. Uh, we can look at these data, you know, break it down in the uh, 45 minutes that we've been here so far, probably four or five people have died in this country from colon cancer uh, just during the period of time that we're here. We know this sequence of events that actually occurs in, in many different cancers, but for sure in the vast majority of colon cancers where the normal colon undergoes these mutations, becomes a small adenoma, and then over time, some of those adenomas, not all of them, but some of them can grow into an invasive cancer. And as we heard, there's about a 5% lifetime risk for the average risk person for getting that invasive cancer. So we want to try to detect these small adenomas and remove them before they become cancer. And guidelines have been published. This was published in the Journal of Cancer. Uh, this is a um, recommendations from the American Cancer Society, uh, the Multi-Society Task Force, which is a GI uh, consortium, and of course, the American College of Radiology. And the recommendations I'm just summarizing here we heard them. These are different techniques that can be used for screening. In my mind, there's no question that really only two of these are very good options for colon cancer screening. We've used testing the blood in the stool for many, many years. By that time, it's already an advanced cancer for the most part. You don't detect precancerous lesions because you have blood in the stool. It's already too late. I would not recommend this as your only way of screening. The two best, and barium enema, which is what I used to do when I was younger, uh, is not a very good test, to be quite honest with you. And barium enemas are going away. And so it's a colonoscopy, which is the gold standard for sure. You get sedated, you're totally knocked out, you wake up a half an hour later, for the most part, you don't even know that anything happened. The advantages of the colonoscopy are that if they see a polyp at that time, it can be removed. The disadvantages of a colonoscopy, and when I say advent, it's relative to the virtual colonoscopy, which I'm gonna spend a few minutes uh, talking about. A colonoscopy um, probably is the most sensitive test as the advantage of removing polyps. Negative is that you have to be sedated, but of course, I would not recommend having a colonoscopy unless you were sedated. It's a little bit of a painful test. Uh, if you, but again, if you're sedated, it's fine. Uh, but there is a risk of bleeding or perforation, and we've seen these from the colonoscopy. Uh, virtual colonoscopy is something that has been around for 15 years. The only reason why it's not being utilized more frequently today has to do with reimbursement issues. The test is clearly a very, very good test, almost as accurate for detecting the large polyps as a colonoscopy. Uh, we use a very low amount of radiation, and I'm gonna show you some images. And radiation is not a concern with a virtual colonoscopy. In fact, I can tell you that uh, just yesterday, uh, where we did five of them here in the hospital, one of them by a very, uh, one of the patients was a very well-known uh, oncologist here, not my oncologist, but uh, she's too young. But, uh, but anyway, I think, you know, so, so, and I'm gonna tell you another famous person who had it in just a few minutes. The problem with a virtual colonoscopy is 
it does require some expertise to read it, but it's just like a colonoscopy. You don't want somebody who doesn't know how to do a colonoscopy to be doing a colonoscopy. So it's the same thing with a virtual colonoscopy. And then the other concern that some people have is, well, if you see a polyp at the virtual colonoscopy, then I have to have a colonoscopy to get it taken out. And that's more or less true. But if we look at polyps that count, let's, and really the only thing that we can utilize is the size of the polyp as an indicator of how bad that polyp is. If you take average risk people at age 50, then about three to 4% of them will have a polyp in their colon that's 10 millimeters or larger. And if you look at polyps that are six millimeters and larger, then maybe we're talking about 10% of people. So 90% of people that have a virtual colonoscopy, assuming we see every polyp, would not need to have a colonoscopy. And then maybe 10% would need to go on to get those polyps removed. But I want to remind you, for some reason, people are not getting colonoscopies. And that's evidenced by the fact that we still have 150,000 new cases of colon cancer. Whatever screening techniques we have, unfortunately, are not working because people are still dying. And the truth is, a virtual colonoscopy requires no sedation, takes about 10 minutes. You still have to clean the colon out. There's a lot of advantages to it. You can go back to work, whatever. As long as it's being performed by somebody that knows what they're doing, it's a very good technique. Now, let me just be fair. We finally have a paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, just, I think, two weeks ago. And um, basically, it looked at um, what happened to people that had colonoscopies over time. And this is really the first paper that I've come across that has shown a decrease in deaths from colon cancer when patients had undergone prior colonoscopy and removal of polyps that they had. There's some, as with all papers, some interesting problems with the paper, but uh, nevertheless, I think what we know and what's being shown time and time again is by having detection of polyps by a screening technique and then having those polyps removed will decrease your risk of getting colon cancer, but not eliminate it. And still, in this study, some patients did develop colon cancer. So it's good to be screened because it's going to decrease your risk, probably not going to decrease it 100%. American College of Gastroenterology also recognizes that uh, virtual colonoscopy or CT colonography uh, can be performed in patients. You know, of course, gastroenterologists want to keep screening in the field of gastroenterology. I can understand that. Send somebody to a gastroenterologist, they want to put a scope in you. Send somebody to the oncologist, they want to give you some chemo. You send somebody to the surgeon, they want to cut something out. And you send somebody to me, I want to kind of take a look at it. But, you know, but we're all working together to try to come up with the best uh, guidelines. Let me show you what a virtual colonoscopy is. This is a movie that I just took off of my computer. And you can see where you are going through the inside of the colon. I can see on the, this is the inside, the luminal view. And then the image on your right is showing me exactly where I am in the colon. I'm in the sigmoid colon kind of coming up into the descending colon. The colon is filled with carbon dioxide. It gets very quickly absorbed. A couple minutes after the exam is over, people don't feel any discomfort. I'm showing you this because as we come up the descending colon in this patient, there's, as Dr. White had shown on the colonoscopy, a small opening there because there's a, carcin there's a cancer that's blocking that area of the colon. Um, this patient had had a fecal uh, testing of the stool for blood, and it was positive. But you can see that, you know, at this point, there's already an advanced cancer. And I, I'll just show you some other images. This is a low-dose CT scan. We use a CT scan to acquire the data for the virtual colonoscopy. You can see this pedunculated polyp hanging off a fold in the right side of the colon. Here it is on the endoluminal view. And then when we see this, the patient can have a colonoscopy. And here it is at the colonoscopy. And they can just clip it off. And the patient is in pretty good shape. Um, so my time is, is just about out. You know, I think it's interesting to note, and Dr. Wade had mentioned it, that for the average person, screening should begin 
at age 45. Uh, as we also heard, if you have family history, strong family history of a first degree relative or so who had a colon cancer, say at age 50 or 55, you should be screened at least 10 years earlier than that. And then, of course, African American men, African American men, not African American women, but African American men should begin screening at age 45. And Obama, you know, he's about the same age as me. I think he's maybe a couple of years older. But uh, two years ago, he recognized, okay, I should get colon cancer screening because I don't want to get colon cancer. And he decided to have a virtual colonoscopy. Uh, I think he just didn't want to be sedated in case anything was happening in the world, you know, and um, you know, then I guess Biden would have to have taken over for that period of time. Maybe that was his concern. But, um, you know, we can talk about the politics involved with getting coverage. Coverage, when I say insurance, insurance coverage, it's going to be coming. I mean, there's a lot of efforts that are being made. I see no reason why it shouldn't be covered, uh, except that everything then costs more money for the government. But if a virtual colonoscopy is good enough for the president, that's probably good enough for all of us in this room. And you know, again, I think whatever screening technique that you get, colonoscopy, virtual colonoscopy, you know, talk to your doctor uh, about what's going to be right. But you should get screened. You should encourage your family members because, trust me, you don't want to wait until you already got a cancer, and then you got to deal with the surgery and the chemotherapy, which is saving people's lives, but it's still not the best thing that you have to go through. So if you can prevent these things from happening before they happen, you're going to be in a lot better shape. Thank you.